Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. This is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. Have the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's been our joy and privilege to come your way each week and spend time with you and uh, share God's Word uh, with you and also to pray with you. Uh, over the last several weeks, we've been talking about prayer and we've been slowly, gradually building up our understanding of prayer, our insight uh, into the Word of God concerning uh, this whole area of our Christian life, uh, developing a life of prayer. And we trust that as we are learning about prayer, that your own personal life of prayer uh, will be enriched and you will keep moving forward and keep moving to higher levels in prayer. Now, on the program today, we want to talk about different kinds of prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, the, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication, in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He says, pray always with all prayer and supplication. Now, when you look at some other versions, uh, they will use the word kind, pray always with all kinds of prayer. For instance, the International Standard Version puts it like this. It says, pray in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and request. Likewise, be alert with your most diligent efforts and pray for all the saints. 
So he says, pray in the Spirit all the time. And he says, pray with every kind of prayer and request. Meaning to tell us that there are different kinds of prayer. And we see this in several places in Scripture. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, the Apostle Paul uh, mentions different kinds of prayers. He says, you know, I first of all entreat that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So he's talking about different things. Prayers, intercessions, supplications, giving of thanks. So what we, want, we need to understand in Scripture is that there are different kinds of prayer. Yes, by definition, prayer is talking to God, it's communion with God, it's, it's that place of intimacy with God, it's sharing a heart with God, and so on. But there are also different kinds of prayer, uh, and therefore in different, there are different ways uh, by which, uh, in which we pray uh, uh, for different situations and circumstances. There's a different way uh, how you'll engage in intercession for an individual, as opposed to how you engage in intercession for a city or a nation. There's a different way you pray uh, when you pray for healing. There's a different way in which you pray uh, when you want to pray a believing prayer or when you want to pray a prayer of consecration. There are different prayers and there are different ways that we use, uh, that we pray these prayers. And of course, which means that there are also different situations in which we use uh, these prayers or a combination of these prayers. Now, I don't want us to be hard and fast and rigid and rule-oriented or step-oriented uh, as we talk about these various kinds of prayer. But our intent here is for us to know how to pray effectively. That's our objective, that in a given situation, I will know how I must take a hold of that situation and take that before God correctly. That's our intent. God is not looking at, did you follow these 10 steps? Or did you follow these, you know, uh, this approach? Uh, God is not governed by those things. God is bigger uh, than all of that. But yet, we must understand that we want to do things right. And, and that's why we're talking about these different kinds of prayer and different ways to pray. So on the program today, I want to just make mention of some of the uh, most common uh, kinds of prayer and briefly talk about them. Uh, as we go along in the weeks to come, we will get into more detail on some of these kinds of prayer uh, and talk more about how we pray uh, given those uh, situations. Uh, and circumstances we face. First of all, there is a prayer of asking and receiving. That means this is a simple prayer where we ask God for something very specific and we receive. So Jesus taught us about that, for instance, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. He said, you know, if, if any of you, uh, he said, ask and uh, you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for everyone who asks, receives, everyone who seeks, finds, Everyone who knocks, to them the door shall be opened. And then he said, if any of you, being evil, uh, if your son comes and asks you for bread, you won't give him a stone. If he asks for an egg, you won't give him a scorpion or a snake. Uh, how much more your heavenly father will give good things to those who ask him. So here he's talking about the prayer of asking and receiving, asking, seeking, knocking. You're going after something very specific. And God will give what you ask, he will help you find what you seek, he will open up the door uh, uh, for which you are knocking at, and God will do that for you. And he says he is much more greater than an earthly father who provides uh, for their own children. He says, your heavenly father will give good things to those who ask him. So there is this prayer of asking and receiving, and Jesus taught more on this, on how we pray and receive from God. And in our upcoming episode, we'll talk more in depth on how do we pray believing prayer? How do we pray the prayer of asking and receiving? Because this is the most common kind of prayer that we all engage in, or we would want to see results in. That there are specific needs that you want to pray about, are specific things that you want to receive from God. Now, how do you go about engaging with God in order to receive that, uh, which He has promised already in His Word for you and me? We'll talk about that. Another kind of prayer is a prayer of supplication. So this is a prayer where we are entreating, uh, we are, are crying out for God's mercy. So this is a prayer of supplication. We're just asking God for His mercy, for His intervention in our situations. It is the, it is the prayer of a person uh, who is in a place of uh, uh, 
uh, it's like a, the, the kind of entreaty a beggar is making. You know, a, a beggar has nothing. Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's devoid of anything. And he entreats somebody, please give me something. It's almost like that. I'm not saying we have to go and beg God. But we're pl- praying out of that place of, of, of us being in a total des- totally desperate situation. And we are crying out or pleading God for his mercy. It could be for ourselves. It could be for somebody else. We are praying the prayer of supplication. We are entreating God's mercy on ourselves or on somebody else in a given situation. So that's the prayer of supplication. It's like how the blind man cried out in Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 29 to 34. He cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he received God's mercy on his life. There is the prayer of intercession. The prayer of intercession is you and me standing before God on behalf of someone else. It could be another individual, or it could be another community, or another church, another group of people. It could be on behalf of a city, or even a nation, or even nations. Basically, we are going to God on behalf of someone else. We are interceding. We are standing before God and praying our prayers for somebody else. And this is a very important uh, role, uh, or we say a ministry that we can all engage in which is to intercede, uh, which is to stand before God so that He could act in response to our praying and touch the lives of uh, another individual or a group of people or a community or a nation. Uh, We will talk in depth on how to intercede. And uh, uh, like we said at the beginning, how you intercede for an individual uh, whom you're praying for salvation may differ on how you intercede for another believer so that that person can grow in their faith. Or it may differ for how you pray, intercede for a church community so that the whole church community can exp- experience spiritual uh, revival or transformation. So even in praying, interceding and in praying the prayer of intercession, there are different ways you go before God uh, before, on behalf of individuals or groups of people uh, uh, based on the outcome that we are pressing for. Then there is, of course, the prayer of thanksgiving. Maybe simply give thanks to God. This is very simple to do. It is as simple as saying, God, thank you for this and this. Thank you, God, for your provision. Thank you, God, for your deliverance. Thank you, God, for your answer to prayer. But the prayer of thanksgiving is so important. It is a part of our prayer, of, of our prayer life. The prayer of thanksgiving is like the step before the miracle, the step before receiving an answer. Many times we think that you pray the prayer of thanksgiving after you receive the answer. But really, you will find that the prayer of thanksgiving is so powerful when you pray it before the answer comes. Jesus gave thanks before the loaves were broken and distributed. Jesus gave thanks before Lazarus was raised up from the dead. The Apostle Paul tells us to give thanks uh, in situations that would cause us concern and anxiety in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And he says, that will lead you into experiencing the peace of God. So the prayer of thanksgiving is really a prayer that actually uh, not only expresses a heart of gratitude to God for uh, what He would do in response to prayer, but it's a prayer that actually positions us for the breakthrough. It's that prayer before the breakthrough. Thanksgiving breaks us through into the answer, into what God wants us to experience. So the prayer of thanksgiving is very powerful. Uh, it's very important for us to learn how to just thank God uh, even before the answer has come. Then there is a prayer of consecration. Consecration is us surrendering to the will of God. We see Jesus, in the life of Jesus, perhaps the only recorded time we see him praying the prayer of consecration is in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, verses 37 to 44. As Jesus is in the garden and he knows that uh, he is going to be taken and crucified and he, he prays, he says, Father, if at all there is possible, any, any possibility, Let this cup of suffering be taken away, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's the prayer of consecration. It is a prayer of dedication and a surrender to the will of God. Uh, Saying, God, even though this is difficult, even though this is painful, even though this is a a sacrifice, and even though there is so much pain, yet, God, your will be done. We must learn to pray the prayer of consecration uh, in, in various areas of our lives, as we surrender and yield to God's rule and reign in us, in those areas of life. There is the prayer of agreement where Jesus taught us. He said in Matthew 18, 19, 
If two of us will agree on earth as touching anything that we ask, it will be done by the Father who is in heaven. So the prayer of agreement is something he's given to us where two or more can agree on the same thing and see God answer and see God move. The prayer of agreement, again, is very powerful. Whether we are praying together or we are praying in different locations or different places, as long as there is agreement in the Spirit, and that's the important thing, that we agree together, we are of one heart, one mind, pursuing one purpose, then there's a prayer of agreement, and Jesus said, it will be done. There is prayer in the Spirit or praying in tongues, praying in languages given to us by the Holy Spirit. Again, that's very powerful um, uh, uh, realm in which we must walk in and we must continue to uh, pray, uh, in, uh, pray in the Spirit. Uh, there's the prayer of repentance or the confession of sin, which when we do something wrong, we need to confess our sins before God. Like uh, John tells us in 1 John chapter 1, uh, verses 7 through 9, uh, that we confess our sins before God and He's faithful and just to forgive us. There is the prayer of unburdening where we cast all our cares upon the Lord. First Peter 5 at verse 7, Peter says that we must cast all our care upon Him because He cares for us. So when we are burdened, we've got things that are heavy on our hearts and minds weighing down on us, we must learn to pray the prayer, prayer of unburdening, of releasing these burdens uh, to God. In Psalm 62 and verse 8, the psalmist says, Pour out your heart to before Him. Let all the weight that's on your heart, just let it be poured out uh, before God. And Lamentations 2 and 19, it says, Pour out your heart like water uh, before the face of the Lord. Unburden that heaviness before God. There is a prayer of faith for healing. That means uh, there are times when, when, the, when the Lord t- tells us to pray for healing. And we see this in James 5, 14, and six, 14 through 16, where if there's anyone sick, he can call for the elders of the church. They anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So that prayer that is offered in faith is a prayer that brings healing to the sick. It's the same as a prayer of asking and receiving, or what we call as believing prayer. It's a prayer that's offered in faith. And we must learn how to pray the prayer of faith for healing, administering healing in the name of the Lord, uh, with or without the anointing of oil. Uh, there is a prayer of waiting on God. Waiting on God means you're just saying, God, I'm here to be with you. I'm here just to listen to you. I'm here to just respond to what you say. I'm going to be still. I'm waiting for you to speak. I'm waiting for you to give the uh, instructions. I'm waiting for you to tell me. And I'm just here to spend time with you. I'm here to wait on the Lord. And we understand the importance of this from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31, that the Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So there are times in prayer where you're just waiting on the Lord. You're still, you're quiet, you're in His presence, and you're waiting. And that's another kind of prayer. you are just waiting on the Lord. And the last kind of prayer that I just want to make mention of is the prayer of watching. The prayer of watching is where you're standing before God and you're saying, God, speak because I'm listening. I want to receive instructions from you. God told us, He has told us, given us His, His, His promise in His word. He says, call unto me. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So that's the prayer of watching. You're, you're, you're called unto God and you're waiting for Him to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. He could open up your understanding and reveal to you things about your present, your future, about other people, about other situations, other circumstances, whatever God wants to do. But you're watching and you're saying, God, please speak to me. I need to hear from you. I need to receive your counsel. I need to receive your direction. I need to receive insight. I want to know what's the plan of action. What's the course of action I need to take? So that's the prayer of watching. It's like Habakkuk who said, I will set myself and I will wait to see what the Lord will speak to me. That means he's positioned himself and he's saying, what is God going to speak to me? That's what I'm going to take a hold of. So there are different kinds of prayer and we must learn how to pray these prayers and when to use these prayers in our prayer life. Many young people seeking to be trained and equipped for Christian ministry desire an opportunity for hands-on involvement in ministry as well as interact, observe and work alongside mature ministers. All People's Church Bangalore is offering a paid two-year ministry intern program with the opportunity for full-time employment with All People's Church upon satisfactory completion. During this two-year ministry intern program, you will attend classes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m serve in various areas of ministry with All People's Church in Bangalore. 
Interact with APC's pastors, staff and ministry leaders. Brochure with details about the Ministry Intern program and the Ministry Intern application form can be downloaded from apcwo.org slash ministryintern. We trust you enjoyed the telecast today uh, that just talking and making mention of various kinds of prayer that are available to us, uh, which we can use in different situations, different circumstances, that we will know how to pray these prayers and when to use them. You know, uh, we don't want to get, as we mentioned, we don't want to get technical about it, but we need to know that there are these kinds of prayers that you and I can pray and use as we talk to God. Let's close off this telecast as we pray together. Father, we ask that by your Holy Spirit and out of your word, you will teach us, God, about these various kinds of prayer and when to use them, how to engage in them as we stand before you in prayer. Help each of us to grow in our prayer lives, to grow in our journey of prayer. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Ready?